It's been almost two years since I graduated from med school. Looking back, I wish I knew these five things before I got into med school. I had many misconceptions about medicine before I got in. Like you get into med school, you finish it, and life after that will be very relaxed and things like that. But I wish someone had told me about these five things that I'm going to talk about today. These would have probably made my you know, life in med school easier because I would have known what uh, to expect and that would have probably made a lot of my friends reconsider their choice of getting into medicine. Now, before I begin, a very short disclaimer. Not everyone who has been through med school may feel about it the way I do. For some, it may have been very enjoyable and for some, it may have been terrible. So what I'm going to be telling you is my honest views and my honest opinion. Not everyone might have the same opinion as me. That being said, let's go. First thing, it's very hard only if you don't like it. Let's just agree with one thing, medical school anywhere is not easy. You have to attend hundreds of lectures every month, then there are dissection classes, labs, you know, clinical rotations and all of these things have their own tests and exams every now and then. But from what I experienced and what I observed amongst my friends, it wasn't a very hard thing. Sure, it was a bit difficult, it was not an easy ride, but it was not very difficult. And I believe the reason why some of us or the majority of us felt that way is because we actually liked the subjects. We enjoyed attending labs, clinical rotations, you know, talking to the patients very early on in our course. Our clinical rotations started actually pretty early in the course, like in the second year itself. And we would spend every morning two to three hours in the hospital interacting with the patients. We would take all the details from them, like why they came to the hospital, what problems they have, what might have caused it, their family history, if they have any previously diagnosed conditions, if they've had any surgeries, things like that and then we would examine them and with all the information that we've got we would try to come to a diagnosis of course we didn't have much knowledge back then but with the limited knowledge that we had we tried to you know figure out what was going wrong with the patients you know it was kind of like playing detective you know it was fun and having this experience pretty early on made us understand you know like what we are studying is actually applied to the work that we're gonna do day in and day out. And one of my teachers used to say, don't study for your exams. Study for that day when you're the only person standing in between a patient and his death. And as narcissistic as it sounds, it is actually true, right? And all of this kept us motivated and interested. But there were some people who were pushed into medicine despite not liking it by their parents just because they got a good medicine entrance rank. You can imagine how difficult it must have been for these people, right? I mean, these are people who wanted to be architects, they wanted to be engineers, they wanted to be artists, and they were pushed into a really long and difficult course, which they weren't even interested in. I saw many of my classmates suffer like this. I mean, they were brilliant people, but they just didn't like what they were studying and therefore the whole course was very hard for them. Some of them failed the exams, some of them are still in med school trying to, you know, just get it done with somehow. In fact, I still remember when I sat my first year exams, there were people from 1995 who were sitting the exams at the same time. Someone who joined medicine the year I was born sitting exams with me. So bottom line, if you like biology subjects and you like working with people, you will love medicine. There's nothing like it. But if you don't, you're gonna hate it and the whole course is going to be incredibly hard and soul crushing. Now, next thing, you'll have to study a lot. All right, I think it's kind of common knowledge that everyone knows that there's, you know, a lot to study in med school. Guess who didn't know? Me. If you watched my previous video where I talk about how I got into med school, I talk about this senior who gave a speech you know, that inspired me to get into medicine. Well, one of the things he said in his speech, and I'm loosely quoting him, he said, you know, people think that you have to study all the time in medicine, but that's not true. You have to study for like two hours, 20 days a month, and that would suffice. So I was in 12th grade and I thought, hmm, this is actually much more than what I'm studying right now. So let me study a bit harder. Let me get into medicine and then I can chill big mistake. So this guy who gave the speech is a bit of a genius and for him probably to us was what was needed but for an average mortal human being like me to us was not enough. I realized this only two months after you know getting into med school but fortunately I started you know liking the subjects. I fell in love with the physiology textbook by Guyton. I 
absolutely love it. And I somehow developed the habit of studying long hours. Let me just show you how many books I've studied. These are just the books that I think will be useful in the future. So I've, uh, you know, kept them. And the ones I don't need anymore are stored away in boxes or given away to juniors and friends. But of course, you don't have to study these many books. I read these many books because I kind of liked reading. Uh, it was a love-hate relationship. Most people can get through medicine without needing to study these many books. But if you are in medicine or if you're planning to get into medicine, please, please read books like Robbins, Guyton, and probably a bit of Harrison's as well. These will help you in the long run as a doctor. Third point, you're not the class topper anymore. This sounds like a proper first world problem. Imagine someone saying, oh, you know, I got into med school, that's great, but I'm not topping my class and it sucks. As entitled and irritating as it sounds, this is an actual issue faced by a lot of medical students. Let's just agree that most people in med school are kind of smart and they would have done well in their educational journey so far. They would have been toppers of their schools and colleges and stuff, right? Let me give you my own example and please don't take this as a flex or an exercise in narcissism. But I topped every exam in school from upper kindergarten. I was a bit slow in lower kindergarten. But from upper kindergarten, UKG to 10th grade, except for one exam in 6th grade, I topped every exam in my school. And in 12th grade, what we call pre-university college here, a friend and me ended up having the same rank, him for engineering and me for medicine. So it was a bit of a tie, but let's just say I was the topper there as well. And then I got into med school. My med school was like this first choice for all the state toppers and people, really smart people, okay? So it was filled with all these really smart and really hardworking people. So not topping and not even being in the top 10% of the toppers came as a shocking experience to not just me, but to a lot of people around me. Like I said, these people would have been toppers in their classes for their whole life. And this came as a humbling experience for me, which said, you know, look, there are so many people who are way smarter than you. So, you know, stay humble or something. Like I said, this is like a first world problem. This is like a problem of educationally privileged people, but this is an actual problem faced by a lot of medical students, at least in their first year. Point number four, five and a half years is a really long time. Before you get into medicine, you'll be like, hey, five and a half years, right? That's okay, I can finish it. After that, I'll be a doctor and life will be set and all that. But, but all your engineering friends graduate when you still have one and a half, two years of you know studying and internship left. And you know, it kind of sucks when one of your friends get a really high paying job when you're still stuck studying. Now, this also sounds like a first world problem. So let's just keep it aside. Even keeping that aside, if you don't like the course, if you don't like the subjects that you're studying, if you don't like the people, if you don't like the place you are in, five and a half years is going to feel like an eternity. And uh, me, like an idiot, took five months break during my internship to study for an exam called USMLE. I ended up not taking the exam and ended up making my medical school a six year journey. Point number five, it does not end at five and a half years. Although you become a fully licensed doctor here in India after five and a half years, like I am right now, you will want to specialize after it. You know, doing your residency in one subject. If you don't know, unlike in other courses like say engineering, where you can choose um, a subject like computer science or aeronautics or like automobile engineering or something cool like that. In the course itself, in med school, you can't do that. Now the medical degree is a general degree. You have to study about all subjects, all body parts because the body works as one unit. And if you only know about one body part or one organ system, you can't treat the patient properly. In fact, dentistry students also study about the rest of the body and not just the mouth and the face. Although not as detailed as in med school, obviously because they have their own subjects to study about. And the reason is that's because the body works as one unit. For example, a badly done tooth extraction can cause an infection of the heart valves, what we call endocarditis. Now, if they didn't know well about the valves of the heart, or about endocarditis, they wouldn't know how to prevent it. So in med school, you get a general degree and you get a good sense of how to treat common conditions in all organ systems in all ages. But after medical school, you specialize in a single subject or closely related subjects or the subject that deals with just one aged group. Like do you want to treat only kids? 
do pediatrics do you want to treat only conditions related to the bone like fractures and other stuff do orthopedics do you want to treat common medical conditions like hypertension diabetes etc do internal medicine or family medicine these are called residencies or we call it postgraduate training here in india and it takes 3 years but what if you just want to treat like say the heart or just the kidney that is fellowship or super specialty training or sub specialty training and that's another 3 years after your residency add to this one or two years of advanced training or advanced fellowships and it will be 3 6 or 8 years by the time you finish all of your training after med school so by the time you finish all of your training you will be like 30 35 years old and your friends in other careers would have you know started a family bought a house and settled down and you would be just starting your career independently but with that being said don't let this discourage you from taking medicine the way i see it you're going to be 33 or 35 anyway so why not get there doing something you love being in the profession that you really enjoy being in if you ask me i can't imagine being in any other job i can't even imagine doing youtube full time being in medicine is a job that pays really well in terms of satisfaction and also in terms of money in the long run that's it for this week if you're interested in getting into med school check out these two other videos i think you'll find it interesting take care and i'll see you in the next one